Hello interwebs. Today's video is going to be an overview of this 1995 Volvo 940 turbo sedan. Here we go. I'm basically going to cover three different topics in this video. And first would be, what is this car? If you don't know anything about Volvos, I'll give you a brief overview. Second would be, what have I done to the car? And third would be a brief review. What do I think of it? What's my experience been like? So, what is this car? So, this car, you can trace its roots all the way back to the Volvo 240. Uh, that car obviously was made for many years. Uh, very popular car, well known for being um, rugged and easy to work on and uh, nice clean Swedish design and there's a lot of things to love about the 240. Volvo was looking to change their lineup and in the early 80s they released the Volvo 760. That was a significant update of the 240 but it did use the basic 240 platform. They later came out with a more simple version, uh, I say down market version of the 760 called the 740. And the 740 was sold through the 80s and into the early 90s. And then they made some updates to, they made some updates to the 740 during which it became rebadged as the 940. And then at the same time that the 940 was sold, they also started selling a 960 which had an inline six cylinder engine. Uh, the 240 and the 740 and the 940 are part of, and to a lesser extent, the 760 are part of the red block family of cars. So that platform has an engine that is literally painted red, uh, which is where the nickname comes from. And they are rear wheel drive. So the engine is mounted longitudinally front to back and two cars just pulled out in front of the guy next to me. Awesome. And they are really easy to work on. Um, they did sell turbo versions and the turbocharged versions were a lot of fun. Um, that's what this car is in particular. And it is a, a platform that gradually became more refined over time. So the 740 and 760 were a lot more refined than the 240. Um, the 940 was a little more refined than the, the 700 series that preceded it, uh, and it really uh, kind of brought Volvo into the modern comfort luxury era at the time. Um, I've got a 93 Volvo 240, and this is a 95 Volvo 940, and the cars are like night and day. Um, they're very different. Uh, the important thing to note is that this car, the 940, in particular this year, 1995, was the last turbocharged uh, red block or any red block that you could get in a car sold in the United States. Uh, that's ultimately the, the short version of the history of the vehicle. So what have I done to the car? I have done a lot of maintenance as well as cosmetic things to the vehicle in order to just basically fix it up as a project. Uh, I swapped in a lot of uh, interior panels and even two exterior body panels, two fenders. I replaced the alternator, I changed the oil, I changed the coolant, I changed two radiator hoses, I changed ball joints, I changed sway bar end links, I had a front end alignment done, um, a variety of just things here and there, uh, interior door panel and window switch uh, trim on the driver's door replaced that, obviously gave it a thorough cleaning, and uh, did a few other things uh, beyond just that list. So what do I think of the car? Uh, I am a fan of this platform, as you can tell by my channel, and one of the things I really like about the sedan is that the sedan does have a tendency to be a little quieter than the wagon. Uh, just the, the shape of the wagon, the size of the greenhouse, the tailgate hatches sometimes can squeak. There's just more echoing and things of that nature going on in the back of the wagon. Uh, in a sedan, you don't really seem to have any of those issues. Uh, the wagon, for sure, wins on comfort 
uh, excuse me, the wagon for sure wins on uh, luggage capacity. Uh, my choice for just everyday driving, if I don't need the capacity, would be a sedan. Uh, I, I, just, I just like the way they drive. I like the way they handle. Uh, I'm a fan of the interior. I think that the layout is very clean. It is, uh, you can sort of tell that this was out around the same time as like your stereotypical 90s Honda Accord because it's sort of cut from the same cloth, but at the same time, it doesn't deviate a whole lot from the Volvos from the late 80s. Uh, very straightforward climate control, stereo, pockets, you know, the gauges are all very straightforward. They're easy to read. There's, it's almost understyled to a fault, and that's, that's Sweden for you, really. Uh, this car has IPD sway bars front and rear. They were on the car when I got it. That's 25 millimeters front and 25 millimeters rear. Uh, it really, really helps the handling. Uh, just that feeling that you have of driving a, a big car or an old car, when you go around a corner and you just feel the weight of the car. Uh, and that's, in a lot of cases, that's the body lean that is communicating to you that you're feeling the weight in the corners. And when you upgrade the sway bars, at least in this car, it doesn't work perfectly for every car, but for these Volvos, just that upgrade alone uh, does a really good job of making that body lean less and reducing it so that you get this feeling that when you turn, you don't feel like you're carrying the weight of the car through the corners. A lot of people say that sway bars don't actually make a car handle more aggressively or faster if you were to actually take it to a racetrack level uh, kind of situations, but that it improves the perceived road feel simply because there's less body roll. And that's why people love them, because less body roll makes it more fun to drive, even if you're just doing everyday duties like this. So I really like that about the car. I also think that the small turbo that this car came with, which is still on it, paired with the automatic transmission is a great combo. It makes it so that you get to use the pretty immediately available torque of a small turbo right away. And it also means that when you just kick the gas pedal and that kick down cable engages and causes the transmission to downshift a gear or two, you are pretty much immediately in boost. Uh, it's awesome. Um, uh, manual transmissions are fun. I love manual transmissions, but there is something about just driving a car every day and when you kick it down, it takes off like a naturally aspirated engine just doesn't do. Um, that immediate boost, that swell of torque, um, these are not high redlining cars. They don't redline at seven or 8,000 RPM. And a lot of the automatics won't even go to the red line that you see on the dash so you're you're 2500 to like 5000 that's kind of your sweet spot and for a car that makes really good torque but maybe not a lot of horsepower that's perfect um, for a daily driver that's fun that's outstanding uh, i do think that this is probably my strongest boosting turbo red block uh, in the sense that they all are stock boosts they're all running about seven eight pounds of boost somewhere in there but for whatever reason this one just feels the strongest to me uh, i don't know what that is i don't know if it's the seals on the turbo if it's the injection system is sorted it could be any number of factors but it just feels strong to me it might be because it's a little bit lighter than the wagons who knows uh, so what else do i think of the car i think that the best thing about this car is that it has a cone air filter. Now that was on the car when I got it. Um, there's a lot of arguments that you will hear, debates on the forums and Facebook groups and whatnot about whether you even need a cone air filter. What does it do on these engines? Is it really freeing up extra air or is it just making more noise? And I'm not here to settle any of those arguments. I'm just here to say that it makes fun noises and I love that. Uh, I am not running any crazy high boost so I'm not going to be able to comment on whether it flows better than the stock airbox. The stock airbox is probably fine at eight pounds of boost, but on this car, when you put your foot into it, you get turbo whoosh, and when you let off of it, you can hear the bypass valve. Now, it's not as loud as, I guess, 
typical tuner blow off valve, you know, that chow sound. But you can hear it, and it's louder than I thought it would be when I first drove the car. So you're not going to be able to hear it while I'm driving around right now, just because, you know, I've got the windows up and it's kind of hard to pick up on a mic. However, I did go ahead and stick a microphone in the engine bay and I recorded some audio already. So I'm going to let you go ahead and listen to that now. That's pretty cool. Uh, it's, it's cool because it only does it when you get on the boost. You hear the echo of the bypass valve whenever you lift the throttle. And it's just fun. It just makes me feel like a kid again. Um, you know, those are, the, those are the things that cause people to modify their exhaust and their intake. And you see every turbo car that exists, there's somebody on a forum for that car who just bought one who says, how can I put a blow off valve on this car? because I want one, because they sound awesome. Uh, you know, turbo noises are fun, and I'm all about that. Um, I will say this is my first turbocharged car in a long time. I've kind of been on the sidelines of turbocharged cars for a while, and then I bought this one last year. Uh, it's currently March 23. I bought this in, like, August of 22, and I've just been gradually working on it as things come up here and there and now I am preparing it for sale. So, uh, you know, that's, it's a good car. I just, I've got too many projects and unfortunately this one has to go. Of all the ones I own, I would say this is probably the one that would be most capable on a road trip. And the reason I say that, obviously, it's missing out on the cargo capacity uh, compared to a wagon, for sure. But this is the quietest one when you're not putting your foot into the boost. Um, the cruise control works. Uh, there's no warning lights on the dash. Um, everything shifts transmission wise like it should. Um, you know, the interior is in good shape. It's got a lot of cool uh, silicone hoses in the engine bay, you know, multicolored, which is fun. That doesn't really do anything on a road trip, but I could definitely put three other people in this car and go on a three or four hour trip. And I don't think anybody would feel like they're in an old car. And that's, to me, what makes this such a great platform. Sorry for the abrupt end of the video portion. Uh, we did have some technical issues with the camera, but I was pretty much done with what I was saying anyways. I'll just leave you with a few more photos of this project as it winds down to a close. And thank you so much for watching.